Hello, I'm Terry Colath. I'm here today with Professor Adrian Kier. We're speaking about a three-part um, presentation he's going to do for us on Vietnam, its history and culture. Thank you for joining me, Professor Kier. It's always a pleasure to be here, Terry. Mm -hmm. Well, I enjoyed, maybe enjoyed is not the right word. I watched the Ken Burns series on Vietnam and I thought how wonderful it would be for us if you would one more time give us your Vietnam history because you did this in the past and it was so rich and it made things um, fit into quite a good perspective for us as you always do to give us the history bringing it up to what we know in our lifetime. Yes Terry, um, living in the United States and being American citizen and I, having lived through the 60s and the Vietnam War um, this is not so much history it's our lives we lived through that we saw it every day on the newscasts and we can't think about Vietnam other than the Vietnam War and it still goes on today you know, mm -hmm. we have uh, leaders political leaders who were captured and are now in the Senate and uh, it's still alive and well and the thoughts are there of mostly bad um, but many people still alive today went through that war so we tend to look at Vietnam in that very sort of short uh, 20 25 years but if you look at Vietnamese history um, which they were occupied one way or another for a thousand years and Vietnam doesn't look at the um, the war as the Vietnam War they call it the um, Vietnam America War because before that there's a Vietnam China War Vietnam French War then the American War they just see that colonists and big neighbors have just tried to dominate them for a thousand years if you go to Vietnam today you get a very different perspective than we would think you would get for those people who were in Vietnam during the war period in that the people of our age will of course remember vividly the events of the war and will take some positions mm -hmm. for or against some are very pro mm -hmm. because they worked for the US or they worked for the South Vietnam government and uh, they weren't and they still aren't pro communist so there are some people who regret what happened but then you go to the young people and the people who are under 25, it's just ancient history. They, one, they don't know much about it. Two, they don't want to know much about it. And three, they want to sell you jeans. So you know, their whole focus is to make money. And whether you're American or Chinese or Indian or whatever, that is not important. You are treated as a tourist, and they want to take advantage of that in the nicest possible way. So yeah. considering the very high uh, percentage of young people in Vietnam, probably within 30 years, those people who were involved in the 60s would become so tiny in number that they'll just wash away. And the only record will be in American psyche, in our history books. Um, whereas in Vietnam, it'll just be a thing of the past, along with the French occupation and the Chinese occupation. Hard to imagine. So why is it, Adrian, that they've been occupied for um, so long? V Vietnam in the north um, is that was its own uh, little mini-state um, for quite a long time. Um, and in the south was um, a part of the Champa Empire, which was around at the time of the 8, 9, eight to 1000 AD. Uh, we know, for instance, of the Cambodian, the Khmer Empire mm -hmm. and Angkor Wat. They were an Indianization group living in Vietnam, and they've warred with Cambodia. So in the south, we have this uh, Middle Ages, early Middle Ages um, uh, war. In the north, you have this independent country. So mm -hmm. you had the two um, types of Vietnam always. There's always been a north and south Vietnam, interesting, for a thousand years. Interesting. The problem with the north in Hanoi, for instance, that, that uh, kingdom got washed away with a giant Chinese expansion um, and uh, they were invaded and occupied for a thousand years. Eventually the French moved in. Um, they wanted to develop uh, French into China because they'd been kicked out of um, India by the Brits and they wanted to create their own empire. So they chose mm -hmm. the Southeast Asia and Vietnam was the first um, port of call because they're invited in by the ruler of the north to actually help them in his war and they stayed and they took Saigon um, which is still called Saigon by the way although technically it's Ho Chi Minh City mm -hmm. people who live in Saigon refer to it as Saigon Interesting. Um, and so the French took the whole country and then they expanded into Laos and then they expanded into Cambodia mm -hmm. and 
didn't make it as far as Thailand. It's the only country that wasn't. Um, and that became French into China. And then independence um, movement started to grow in Ho Chi Minh. And of course, then we know about the situation with America being brought in and the threat of communism. The domino, if you remember when, in the 60s, the domino concept was frightening us all, that if the, China, if the North Vietnam communists took over the South, they'd take over Cambodia, then they would take over uh, Malaysia, then they'd take over um, Australia, right. and then end of the world. So that was the reason why America had to take a stand. And that's only the first section. Then we, <laughs> then we come on to session two, where we go from Ho Chi Minh and the communists to Vietnam today. Yes. And the third session. The third session is when we're really going to um, talk about the war and the aftermath of the war. The, the, the main purpose at the end is to show what Vietnam looks like today. In fact, apart from Saigon itself, where you can see um, the hotels where the American journalist um, stayed, you can see um, the palace which the president stayed in, where the famous photograph of the Viet Cong um, tank pushing down the gates um, and the helicopter leaving the American embassy, mm -hmm. which, by the way, Americans always want to go and see where that embassy is. And of course, it's gone. Yeah. It was demolished. So that helicopter, the last flight out of Saigon, uh, doesn't exist anymore. So there's just a, a shopping mall. So it's rather yeah, disappointing. But yeah. if you really want to get a taste of what it was like to be in Vietnam in the 60s, late 60s, they have preserved the Chi tunnels, which are about an hour, 45 minutes drive out of Saigon downtown. And there they will show you around the tunnels that the Viet Cong used to avoid capture. And they lived, there were probably 10,000 people lived underground. And it is quite remarkable how they could have hospitals underground, schools, and cooking. And I'll show you a photograph, and you would walk right past me. I went down the tunnel, and you were walking within six inches of me, and you didn't know I was there. And so they did a very good job at hiding from the American troops. Then you say, well, how can you have a, um, a whole series of ca uh, kitchens and canteens? Surely there'd be smoke. And I will show you a picture of a, um, a, um, a chimney from one of the underground uh, food preparation areas, and the smoke comes out, but it's so cleverly brought up to the surface and covered in leaves that it just dissipates horizontally. So the helicopters, the United States helicopters flying overhead looking for signs of occupation in the woods wouldn't see a thing. And that went on from the French occupation all the way through to the American War. And it's rather gruesome seeing these tunnels, um, but it's uh, also kind of scary because they're very small. And uh, you travel long distance underground, maybe 200 yards, and claustrophobia oh, can, yeah. can, can actually take a serious uh, effect on you. Well, that's session three. Hope you'll join us for all three sessions. It begins on Monday. June 4th and continues for three Mondays.